Hi guys, this is Dr. Bailey. I'm a practicing orthodontist and the co-founder of Trayminder. Today I'm going to give you some tips on how to make your clear aligner therapy a success. So the most important thing to remember is that you want to wear your aligners 22 hours a day. Uh, scientifically, they have done a lot of research and basically the scientists have shown that for the most effective teeth movement, you have to have light forces and continuous forces. What does that mean? It just means that your clear aligners will move your teeth a little bit. It won't be too aggressive of a movement and that's good. But the second thing to remember is that you need to have continuous forces. The best way to move your teeth is to try to keep your trays in for as long as possible. So that's why orthodontists will advise that you wear your trays for 22 hours a day, because that will give you the, the most continuous amount of wear time to stimulate your bone cells, your osteoblasts and your osteoclasts to work efficiently to weaken and break down the bone so that your teeth can move and building back up the bone. So that's a little background on that. But what I tell my patients is to think in terms of your free time. So if you have to wear your trays for 22 hours a day, you get two hours of free time every day. So how do you use your two hours of free time? I usually recommend 20 minutes for breakfast, 30 minutes for lunch and 40 minutes for dinner. And you'll still have another 30 minutes for snacks or for oral hygiene. So that's kind of how you, I like to break it up. Okay. Um, when you're just getting started, it's so important to try to get into a good routine and a good habit because we all know how hard it is to break a bad habit and so if you can start off strong and get into a good routine then the rest of your therapy your your journey your smile journey is going to be all the more easy that you don't have to constantly think about it and that's why I created my app Trayminder it, it basically has a timer on it and so every time you take out your aligners you pause the timer and it's going to send you a, a notification to replace your aligners at set amount of time and what I tell my patients is that it's a tool. You know, if you find it helpful, use it. If you only use it for a month before you establish a good routine, then you don't have to keep using it if you don't want to. So it's it's just a tool for you. And I, I hope that you'll check it out. Um, so that is the first and most important thing. The second thing is that when you're getting started, the first week is the absolute worst because your teeth are not used to moving up and all of a sudden you're asking them to move it's like if you've been a couch potato and all of a sudden you decide to run three miles you are going to feel super sore the next day that's normal and your teeth are going to feel sore on the plus side it tells you that it's working so think in terms of the positive right uh, so when you are feeling sore the best thing to do is to try to avoid taking them out and putting them in uh, excessively so eat full meals avoid snacks and after dinner go floss and brush your teeth put on your aligners and keep them on for the entire night until the next morning because when you're when your teeth are moving and you're taking them off and putting them in it makes them really, really sore. I mean, some of my patients tell me, no joke, that it feels like they're pulling their teeth out. You're not, they're not really pulling their teeth out, but that's what it feels like. So to minimize the discomfort, just limit the number of times you're taking them off and putting them back on. Um, now, if you do want to take something for the pain, for the soreness, it's okay to take Tylenol. Tylenol, the active ingredient is acetaminophen. I prefer acetaminophen to, let's say, Motrin or, um, or the active ingredient ibuprofen. The reason is because the research has shown that acetaminophen does not inhibit your teeth from moving versus ibuprofen does have a does does decrease uh, or inhibit slightly the teeth from moving. So I would go with Tylenol, acetaminophen versus Motrin ibuprofen. Okay, um, and then the next thing we want to talk about is foods and drinks. 
okay? So you should not be eating or drinking with your aligners on. The exception is water or sparkling water. Sparkling water does have a small amount of acid and sparkling water is very low that it doesn't have any uh, effects on weakening your your enamel so but you definitely want to avoid eating or drinking foods especially with sugars or highly pigmented foods because it can cause cavities and also pigmented foods can stain your teeth because the enamel in your teeth have little pores and the pigments in your foods they go inside the pores and they stain your teeth so for those two, two reasons, I would just stay away from eating or drinking with your aligners on, okay? Um, and so the next thing is hygiene. A lot of my patients tell me that since getting started with clear aligner therapy, their oral hygiene has improved tremendously. They're, if they weren't flossing before, they're flossing now. But ideally, you would want to floss once a day and brush after each meal. And I like to carry a travel toothbrush with me so it makes it easy and portable. Uh, but at a minimum, if you're in a big hurry, at a minimum, you know, carry some water with you and make sure that you rinse your mouth out and your trays out before you replace them after meals. Okay. Um, and speaking of replacing your aligners, make sure that you're always putting them in the case because it's so easy to put your trays on a paper napkin and then accidentally throwing them away. I mean, it, it has happened to me before. I've told my patients not do it. I've done it myself. I'm human and I had to go dumpster diving and I'm hoping that you won't have to do that. So always put them back into the case so that you can minimize losing them. If you accidentally lose it and you can't find an, your current aligner, feel free to move on to the next aligner if you have it and just make sure that you wear it for extra days. And that's the beauty of clear aligners is that it's not detrimental if you accidentally throw your aligners away. Okay, um, the other question I get is removal. There's a lot of questions about how to properly remove your aligners, and especially with patients that have a lot of crowding to begin with, or they have a lot of attachments. Those are the cases where taking off your aligner is super hard. I mean, it's just, so my advice is to find the area where it releases so you're gonna have to just practice but I have a in-depth video on how to do it it works for 85% of the cases I'll put a link below so that you can review it at, uh, at your own time but basically it's just practice once you get the basics down you kind of know where to pry your aligners off and and it will get easier I promise now there are some tools on the market that you can use um, and one of them, here are two of them. Uh, this one is called a pull tool, okay? And this one is called the ortho key. They both have these little hooks that you can use to, you know, dislodge your, your aligners. This one, the pull tool has a little, um, like a silicone, not super squishy but it's supposed to be an aligner seeder so it's an aligner seeder and a removal tool in one so you can try it out i'll put some links below um, and definitely you know if you're gonna remove your aligners it's really important to wash your hands first before you do that okay uh all right and then that leads me to chewing exercises uh i like to tell my patients that if they are starting a new aligner for the first two, you know, one to three days to do some chewing exercises. What is chewing exercises? Well, uh, chewing exercises are using, are basically helping your trays to seat better. You want your aligners to seat all the way onto your teeth. If you see halos like this, then that means that your trays are not seating properly. What you can do is use chewies like this. And chewies are just basically like little tiny foam rollers. They're kind of squishy. And you seat your trays and then you chew on it. So I tell my patients to do five minutes of chewing 
two, three times a day. And that helps your trays to really get a good grip on your teeth and thereby increasing the efficiency of the tooth movement. And just like anything, you definitely clean these. You can soak them in um, retainer bright or any denture tablet solutions, or you can make a mix of uh, half and half hydrogen peroxide and half water. Soak it for about 10 minutes and rinse really well, okay? And speaking of cleaning, definitely clean your clear aligners. I tell my patients that if they are only brushing their teeth and not cleaning their clear aligners, it's like taking a shower but putting on dirty clothes. It's just, it, it, you don't want plaque and food on your aligners and then wearing them and transferring that to your just clean teeth. So uh, there are, you know, cleaners like Retainer Bright, they have um, denture tablets. Those are super affordable. That's what I use myself. They, you know, I think they Target sells one that's their own brand. It's like 50 tablets for five bucks or something like that. It's super cheap. So just drop one tablet in cold water or lukewarm water. Soak your aligners, soak your chewies in while you're having dinner, you know, and then after you're done, rinse them out really well. And I like to use my toothbrush to actually dip it into the solution and brush my clear liners. Or you can use a electric toothbrush too. A Sonic Care or Oral B are really great. They really get into the nooks and crannies of your clear liners and give them a really good clean. Uh, some people like to use uh, toothpaste um, and you can use that too. The only caveat is that if you use toothpaste, there's the silica in your toothpaste will create little tiny surface scratches on your clear liners. But if you don't mind that, then that's an easy way of doing it. You can brush your teeth and then brush your aligners and you're good to go. And some patients actually tell me that they like that slightly dull look on their clear liners because when you get a fresh pair of aligners, they look really shiny and bright when you have them in your mouth. And sometimes that makes it more obvious that you're wearing clear aligner. So when you're, the surface of the aligner is a little bit dull or scratched up, it looks a little more natural. So I don't know, let me know if you've done that in the comment below and let me know which one you prefer, but that's definitely a little tip that you can use. Okay, and the next thing I wanna talk about is rubber bands. Some of you lucky ones won't need rubber bands because you already have a good bite. But for a lot of us, it's important to wear rubber bands. And what rubber bands do is that they correct your bite. Okay, so aligners and braces, they only, they only align your teeth. They do not correct the relationship of your top teeth and your bottom teeth. Your top teeth and bottom teeth are made to fit together in a certain way so that, so that you know, when you chew, when you eat, when you speak, everything comes together properly. So I always tell my patients, you know, if these are your top teeth, my knuckles right here, they have peaks and valleys, and these are the bottom teeth, they have to fit together like so, like a jigsaw puzzle piece, right? You want the peaks and the valleys to fit together. If the peaks and the peaks are on top of each other, that's really going to wear out the peaks over time, especially if you grind your teeth at night. It's really going to create premature enamel loss and that's not a good thing. So if your orthodontist tells you to wear your rubber bands, make sure that you're wearing it full time. And full time means 22 hours a day. Sometimes patients, I tell my patients to only wear their rubber bands at night and basically that's when they've already achieved their ideal bite and I just want to maintain it and prevent any relapse. So and sometimes patients wear on one side or the other side. There are a myriad of reasons why and it's just based on where your bite is and which direction your teeth have to move to get to the desired class one occlusion, which is the ideal bite, okay? So that's rubber bands. And if you guys want me to do a video on that, just comment below. I'll do a more in-depth video on rubber bands. Okay, and a lot of you will also need what's called IPR. IPR stands for interproximal reduction. And basically it just means that your orthodontist will use sandpaper strips, dental sandpaper strips to polish 
a little bit of your enamel on the sides, not the up down, but the side to side, just to make them a slightly more slender. And that's usually done to gain a little bit of space, especially if you have crowding or to resolve what's called Bolton discrepancy. I won't go too much into that. I have another video, I'll link it below if you wanna watch what it's for and what to expect, okay? And I think that that's pretty much for now. If you've made it all the way through to this end of this video, kudos to you. Um, I wanted to just create this video to bring some knowledge uh, to people who are just getting started. Uh, that's just, there's a lot of information out there and I just wanna give you some insider information, you know, what an actual orthodontist will tell their own patients. And hopefully you found this video to be helpful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and smile.